Last year, I put out a couple of videos with TQQQ and SQQQ in them. And even now, a year later, about five to 600 views a month come just from those videos alone. So I figured that I want to go through and I want to re-talk about this. I want to talk about leverage. I want to go over triple leverage ETFs because it's still a hot topic that a lot of my students ask me about. So we're going to go over all of that right now guys hit the like button subscribe to this channel hit the notification bell if you guys don't know who i am my name is pete DiCarlo. i run a company called capitalist academy we're going to do right around three hundred and forty thousand dollars worth of revenue this year and i've been a full-time trader for the past eight years people love leverage guys i'm telling you people and this is one of the biggest issues when it comes to investment or investing and trading in general is that a lot of people just want to speed up the process of getting rich or making money. And I understand because as humans, we are not, you know, physically wired to have delayed gratification. And so a lot of people, a lot of my students, a lot of my friends, they want to use leverage to get to their destination faster. But what tends to happen is they actually end up getting even further away from where they initially wanted to go because leverage comes with a massive amount of downside. So let's go over the basics of leverage before we actually talk about TQQQ and SQQQ. So I went through a couple of articles on Investopedia. I will link them down below. And what I did was just took snippets that I thought were the most important things to look at when we're talking about triple leverage ETFs and leverage in general. So leverage comes with many advantages and disadvantages. It can obviously magnify your returns, but it can also magnify your losses, making the use of leverage a risky investment decision. There are multiple ways that you guys can leverage your portfolio. So for instance, one could be using options. Uh, which I tend to like depending on the type of option situation and how long out you want to go. The other way is through margin, which I do not like doing. And then the third is through like a triple leveraged ETF. So one other thing too, guys, I'm going to put all these in the show notes in the description down below. So you can also take a look at all these uh, cue cards that I've made today as well. So Leverage in general is just a way to borrow funds or maximize your potential returns, which obviously is going to maximize your potential losses as well. And that's why it's such an issue. Now, let's hone in and look at triple leverage ETFs. I talk a lot about options on this channel. Um, specifically, we're going to make some videos next week on leap options for you long-term investors. But let's actually talk about how this ends up working with a triple leverage ETF. So the FAS ETF which basically goes off of the Russell 1000. We're not going to talk about that today. We can look at it a bit when we get into the charts and stuff, but the FAS ETF will invest its assets in long positions of individual securities that make up the Russell 1000. The fund also invests in financial instruments that provide leverage and unleveraged exposure to the Russell 1000, thus creating the ability for the returns of the underlying stock to be tripled. So when the Russell 1000 goes up 1%, FAS goes up 3%. Now, notice that the ETF's five-year performance is not equal to the three times performance of the index. So as the per prospectus notes, and you guys can actually ask for a prospectus or just look it up online. Sometimes your brokers will send them to you. The quote, daily rebalancing of the compounding of each day's returns over time and the return of the fund for periods longer than a single day will be the result of each day's return compounded over the period, which will very likely differ from the 300% of return that the index saw over the same period. So what does this mean? Let's take a look quickly at some charts. So let's just look at the NASDAQ. So if we look at the NASDAQ right now, this is going to be a chart of the NASDAQ. I'm just going to actually go ahead and re remove all of my drawings for you guys too. So what you're going to notice here is this is, let's just use the, uh, from the Rona Rona, the NASDAQ was trading at around 9,740 at the Rona back in, you know, February of 2020. Since that time, the NASDAQ has gone up 50%. Okay, so that means if you had a triple leveraged ETF, like a TQQQ, this should be up 150%, because if the NASDAQ went up 50%, it should be triple, it should be up 150%. What you're going to notice here is if we draw out the same dates, you're going to notice right here that we are actually only up 110%, still a lot. 
but definitely not triple. It's just barely over double, even though this is a triple leverage ETF. And the reason for this is because all of the daily rebalancing and everything else that the fund has to do on a daily basis. If you have a normal ETF like an SPY or one of the ARK ETFs that a lot of people like, you're not going to have that type of daily rebalancing and therefore you're not going to see things um, you know, decay over time like we do with a triple leveraged ETF. Those things that give it the leverage are also the things that cause it to decay over time. So a lot of people, just to like, you know, not discredit this, but a lot of people say to me, well, if the stock stock market does nothing but go up, why don't I buy triple leverage ETFs to the upside? You definitely can. You can. I don't recommend it because the, there's still an insane amount of risk. But in theory, you definitely could. If you would have bought TN or not TNA, TQQQ at the beginning of the Rona and held it till now, you'd be up 150% instead of being up 100%. The only issue with this is that it's going to move three times to the downside. So instead of the market dropping 30% like it did during the Rona, this would have dropped 75%. So you would have been able to have to hold, you know, if you had a hundred grand, that would have evaporated down to $25,000 and you would have had to hold all the way through that. And if that was an extended, like, let's say that this took two years to recover instead of you know, six months, this would have constantly been decaying. So if you look at something like an SQQQ, which is the inverse, even if the market went down for nothing but like three years, SQQQ will probably never get back up to $1,218. This will never get back up there. This thing, you'd be lucky if it moves up to $10, but we'll talk about that um, later on once we get through these cards. So how does it work? We already went through that. And let's say here, the other side of the coin is that investors can actually benefit from the downward side of a financial slide. So for instance, a triple leverage ETF against an underlying such as SQQQ, which in theory, every single time that you know uh, NASDAQ goes down 1%, we should see in theory SQQQ go up 3%. Um, and that tends to you know not happen over time. If you look at today right now, uh, for instance, the the Nasdaq is only down, um, or the Nasdaq is actually up 0.35, and the SQQQ is down 0.80. So yes, that is nearly triple the inverse move. But like I was trying to say before, this is never going to recover to the way that somebody might think. I see a lot of newbies come in and they're like, "Dude, SQQQ was $1,200. It's gonna have to get back there." Like, no, it's it's not because what's gonna happen is it's gonna just continue to decline, decline. Even if we get a couple of bumps on you know days where the market's down significantly. At the end of the day, they're just going to continue to do inverse stock splits or reverse stock splits until eventually they just dilute everything to the to the complete downside. You can see here, this is the most recent lows on NASDAQ, and this is where we are actually at this high at SQQQ right now. So for me, playing a triple leverage ETF to the downside is just not worth it. I do play them to the upside, which I'm going to talk about, but I would never play SQQQ to the downside. It's just not worth it. I would rather buy straight up puts, to be quite honest. Unless you're planning to hold SQQQ for like a day or so, then that's different, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, the bottom line, given the volatility that is inherent in financial markets, only investors who have the time to pay attention to these investment vehicles should consider allocating a small portion of their investments to a triple leverage ETF. The upside potential looks explosive, but if you're on the right side of the market movement, however, beware of compounded negative returns over time. So we all know compounding interest is the eighth one of the world. It's also, you know, the, like the opposite of compounding in negatives is is just going to be terrible for you. Now, there's one good thing that is uh, better than margin. Can you lose more money than you've actually invested in a leveraged ETF? And the answer is no. So um, let's say that you put five thousand dollars into SQQQ and you lost it all. It's not going to you know it's not going to continue to invest and compound so negatively that you owe money. As to where if you margined a, a crap load of shares of like some stock and then the stock dropped ninety percent overnight, you might owe some cash. You might actually lose more than you actually have. So at the end of the day, when it comes to something like an SQQQ. What they're saying and what I agree with them with is the only way I would play this is if you're going to day trade it. I used to day trade it from time to time. So you can see here, this is today. You could have actually played a couple of these moves up here. So that'd be 3%. This would be 1%. This would be 1%. I used to day trade them. And sometimes from, from time to time, if I want to get a little volatility in day trade, I will day trade TQQQ and SQQQ. You can even hold them overnight. Um, but to be quite honest, I would be very, very careful. 
when it comes to actually investing in them. The only way I'd invest in something like a triple leverage ETF is if I had to guarantee, I knew that there was no way the market was going to take a major pullback for like the next three years, which I just can't give that. Now in the next video, we're going to go over options because one of the best ways to play TQQQ is to actually sell cash secured puts against it. I'm currently doing that right now with TNA, which is a triple leverage ETF. And I like to sell puts on TNA a lot. So in that video, we are going to go over it. But overall, let's wrap this up. Guys, the key takeaway is leverage is used to borrow funds in investing with the goal of magnifying your returns. The use of leverage is risky as not only do the returns have potential to be magnified, but so do your losses. So please use this with extreme caution. A less risky method is by doing a triple leverage ETF. I would always say if you guys really want to get leverage into your portfolio or your long-term investments, or you really want to go against the market, I would definitely say an short term an inverse ETF or a triple leverage ETF is definitely a better option than like shorting a stock outright. Um, if you did want to do puts, I would recommend going like at the money or something like that. And leverage ETFs act like a regular ETF in the way that they invest in the benchmark or sector that they utilize to leverage their strategies to enhance the returns. But one of the most popular investment managers offering a leveraged ETF is Direxion. And one of the things you'll notice is if you look up here on the top, Direxion is a lot of the ones that are used. So TNA, you know, they're Direxion. TQQQ, this is a pro shares. Uh, TVIX, I think is Direxion too. No, they're not. Um, but overall, guys, that is how you would use a triple leverage ETF. And those are some major aspects of leverage and triple, uh, triple leverage ETFs. And I hope they help. Like I said, I am going to do a more in-depth video on TQQQ and SQQQ later on in the week. But until then, I want you guys to have a very basic understanding of what they are and what they're used for before we get into the best option strategy that you can use for something like TQQQ and SQQQ. Guys, thank you for all the support. Hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.